This program was produced by the National Oil Heat Research Alliance in conjunction with the National Fire Protection Association. Carbon monoxide, known chemically as CO, is a poisonous gas that results from the incomplete oxidation of carbon during the fuel combustion process. CO is colorless, tasteless, and odorless, and is a leading cause of accidental poisoning deaths in the United States. Carbon monoxide is the primary cause of anoxia, or oxygen deprivation in the body, which leads to more than 15,000 emergency room visits in the United States each year. Included in that number, according to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, are over 200 deaths related to the use of combustion appliances in the home. In an effort to reduce these numbers, extensive efforts are underway to equip homes with carbon monoxide alarms. Since these alarms can be triggered by carbon monoxide generated by a number of different sources, you may be called upon to determine if the oil heat system is responsible. This video will help you understand the dangers of carbon monoxide and its possible sources. Most importantly, always remember that your primary obligation is to protect yourself and your customers. If a customer calls to report that their carbon monoxide alarm is sounding, they should be instructed to move immediately to fresh air, either outdoors or by an open door or window, and to notify emergency services. If a carbon monoxide alarm sounds while you're at the home, Nora recommends that you immediately notify the occupants and have everyone move to fresh air. All fuel burning appliances, including oil heat systems, are potential sources of CO in the home. So it's important that we understand all of the possible sources of carbon monoxide, its telltale signs and symptoms, how it's measured, how to test for its presence, and the appropriate actions that should be taken when various levels are detected. CO is created whenever fossil fuels are burned. It can accumulate in building interiors where there are any types of fuel burning appliances, including fireplaces, wood stoves, water heaters, furnaces, boilers, ranges, and clothes dryers. Even tobacco smoke includes quantities of carbon monoxide. It's important to understand that the CO detected inside a building can be produced by sources outside the building. These include the use of chainsaws, gas or charcoal grills, and any natural gas or propane powered devices in an area where their exhaust is close to a door, window, vent, roof overhang, garage, or some other point of entry. In addition, vehicle exhaust originating from attached garages or cars idling in the driveway can be a significant source of indoor CO. Moisture on inside windows and or walls, chalky white powder on the chimney or vent, and soot, rust, or scale buildup around appliances and vents often indicates poor ventilation. And poor ventilation often leads to the presence of CO. CO levels are typically expressed in parts per million, or PPM. A reading of 5 ppm means that in a given volume of air, 5 parts of each million are CO. Low level carbon monoxide exposure often goes undetected in healthy people. It can cause flu-like symptoms, without fever, and red lips, blurred vision, and slurred speech 
that clear up after the person leaves the affected area. Although carbon monoxide poisoning depends on both its concentration and time of exposure, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission states that most people will not experience any symptoms from prolonged exposure to CO levels of approximately 1 to 70 ppm. But as CO levels increase and remain above 70 parts per million, symptoms become more noticeable. Children, the elderly, pregnant women, and people with heart or respiratory problems are particularly susceptible to carbon monoxide poisoning. While there don't seem to be clear guidelines about exactly what levels of CO exposure are acceptable, there's no disagreement that at higher levels, CO exposure causes severe health problems. Even for the most physically fit, at sustained concentrations above 200 parts per million, disorientation, unconsciousness, and death are possible. 400 ppm concentrations cause headaches and nausea. 800 ppm causes dizziness after 45 minutes of exposure, collapse and unconsciousness after two hours. At 1600 ppm, dizziness occurs within 20 minutes. At 6400 ppm, dizziness occurs in one to two minutes. Unconsciousness and danger of death occurs after 10 to 15 minutes. And carbon monoxide levels of 12,800 parts per million can cause death in as little as one to three minutes. There are a number of CO testers available, and most electronic combustion analyzers also have the ability to test for carbon monoxide in ambient air. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions regarding testing procedures and analyzer calibration and maintenance. Always verify that your analyzer is properly zeroed out before use. To do this, you have to understand how your particular test instrument handles the CO sensor reading on power-up. In order to cancel out the presence of ambient CO, some older combustion analyzers do an automatic power-up. This means that if ambient CO readings are 20 ppm when the instrument finishes its warm-up, it will indicate the CO level as zero. Other instruments do a manual power-up of the sensor, which means that if there is 20 ppm in the space, the instrument will display 20 ppm after the warm-up period. When you detect the presence of CO in a building, it's essential that you also measure the CO outside the building to determine where the carbon monoxide is being generated. For example, if you measure 25 ppm of CO inside and 17 ppm outside, the main problem may be caused by something outdoors, but there is still 8 ppm being generated by an indoor source. While there is no commonly accepted indoor air standard for CO, the EPA advises that normal levels are typically 0 to 5 ppm inside buildings that do not have gas stoves. Levels near properly adjusted gas stoves are typically 5 to 15 ppm. And those near poorly adjusted gas stoves may be 30 ppm or higher. The current Occupational Safety and Health Administration permissible exposure limit for carbon monoxide is 50 ppm as an 8-hour time-weighted average concentration. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health has established a recommended exposure limit of 35 ppm as an 8-hour time-weighted average and 200 ppm as a ceiling. 
Many emergency responders put on breathing apparatus at 35 ppm. If a service technician detects elevated ambient CO levels during a service call, his first obligation is to protect himself and the building's occupants. For CO levels from 10 to 35 ppm, building occupants and owners should be notified and the space should be ventilated. At levels over 35 ppm, the Building Performance Institute recommends that appliances be shut down and repaired. Once the level in the work area is acceptable, it's time to begin troubleshooting. Studies of carbon monoxide alarms have shown that over 60% of activations were due to an idling automobile in an attached garage while 20% were due to an unvented gas appliance. 19% of the time, they were due to backdrafting appliances. The most common causes of CO released into buildings from oil heat systems are blocked chimneys or vents, damaged flue pipes, restricted air supply in the building, cracked heat exchangers, Check chimneys with a visual inspection scope or mirror to be sure that they're clear. If debris is found to be blocking a chimney, remove it or arrange for it to be removed. If the chimney itself is deteriorating, a chimney professional should be called. If the flue pipe is corroded or has fallen, it should be replaced and properly supported. When corroded flue pipe is found, it's good practice to determine the cause. It could simply be age. But flue pipe corrosion is also a symptom of flue gas condensation caused by under-firing the unit or improper chimney size. In some cases, especially with older buildings, a chimney liner may be needed. Restricted air supply to heating appliances has become increasingly problematic as many homeowners have added insulation and weather stripping to reduce their energy bills and sometimes perform home improvements that block the flow of sufficient air to the heating appliance. Because of concerns about energy conservation, many newer houses don't breathe as well as they should. Most homes today also have features such as exhaust fans, clothes dryers, and fireplaces that remove air from the building. In some cases, so much air is removed that the building goes negative, causing air to be sucked down the chimney and the products of combustion to vent directly into the building. In these cases, a way must be found to get sufficient air to the burner. Sometimes simply adding properly sized vents to the boiler room door or walls can solve the problem. Other times it's necessary to install an outside air intake to assure that sufficient air reaches the burner. There are many better ways to test for a cracked heat exchanger than to rely on a visual inspection. One of the most common is to perform an over-fire draft test while the burner is operating and the blower is off. Then energize the blower and observe the draft gauge. If the draft changes when the blower energizes, the heat exchanger may be defective. Other tests include watching the O2-CO2 reading at the breach before and after the blower comes on. If the reading changes more than 1%, this can also point toward a cracked heat exchanger. Keep in mind when testing for a defective heat exchanger that a loose clean-out port or leakage on the return side of the air handler competing with the chimney for draft can also be indicated by these same tests. 
When a heat exchanger is found to be defective, it or the entire furnace should be replaced. It is usually not practical to repair the heat exchangers in residential furnaces. Carbon monoxide levels in flue gases are reported in parts per million and or CO air-free ppm. Air-free means that a calculation has been performed to compensate for the oxygen contained in the flue gases. Most modern properly adjusted oil heat systems operate with single digit steady state CO air-free readings. Steady state means that the stack temperature has reached its highest point and leveled off. A steady state CO air-free reading of over 50 ppm is a clear indication of a problem. Readings in excess of 400 ppm mean the unit should be serviced or shut down immediately. CO air-free readings are usually somewhat higher on startup but startup readings over 400 ppm typically indicate a rough start and should be investigated and corrected. A significant presence of CO air-free is often detected in the flue gases of oil heat systems when there is excess or insufficient combustion air. However, CO is also produced when any part of the oil burner flame is reduced below 1128 degrees, typically due to flame impingement, excessive air, mismatched oil-to-air patterns. In many instances, simply adjusting the burner to manufacturer's specifications including proper combustion air settings, fuel unit pressure, firing assembly placement, and nozzle selection will correct these problems and bring the CO reading down to acceptable levels. In some cases, the CO readings in the exhaust gases will be high right after a new heating unit is installed or after the unit has been saturated with unburned oil. Once the unit has operated properly for approximately a half an hour, the readings should be normal. Though the danger of carbon monoxide poisoning is lower with oil heat than with other hydrocarbon fuels, we must always be on the lookout for potential CO problems. While safety is the paramount concern in all aspects of the oil heat service technician's job, perhaps the most critical need for care comes in properly installing, servicing, and inspecting heating systems to prevent carbon monoxide, the invisible silent killer, from affecting our customers.